don't have to wait too long until I can get involved. It's early in the first level and I get dealt pocket kings in the low jack. So I open and the cutoff makes the call. Now I'm hoping it's so early on in the day that ace magnets haven't had the chance to charge up yet. And it looks like my luck's in because queen 3-3 three, three on the flop is pretty good for me. The calf would raise almost always if you have pocket queens pre-flop. So I can write that off. There's not really any two pairs, straights or flushes to worry about. Now maybe the only thing I've got to think about is ace three suited, but there's only two combos of that available, so I'm not really scared. I throw in a C bet and decide on half pot. The calf takes a second, but he does make the call. Now the turn is the two of hearts, a safe card to see, but with two hearts on the board now, I want to size up a bit, so this time I bet 75%. I wouldn't call it a snap call, but the cutoff certainly didn't take long before he does put the chips in. River's the ace of diamonds, and I have to admit, I'm not particularly happy to see it. But when I think about it a bit, I don't really think that it helps him. I'm not worried about a straight, because calling 4-5 on the flop seems a little wide. I think I would have heard from him already if he had ace-queen, so the only concern really is ace-three. Well, if he's got that, then fair play. Might end up losing some chips, but... There's really no need to be going broke. We are very deep, so I do decide to go for value and go for nearly a full pot size. If he does raise, I can fold, but I think I've got to go for it. He does have a think, but in the end he decides against it. Now, I'd obviously like to get more with a premium pair like this, but it is a good start to the day. We're now level two and I get King Jack offsuit under the gun. Now, I'm not sure if I should be getting involved here in early position, but in game, I do open the pot. Now, according to smarter people than me, I can open here, but most of the time I should just be getting out of the way. Anyhow, the cutoff calls and the big blind wants to see the flop too. Ace, queen, eight with two hearts and the big blind checks to me. It feels like I've so many aces in my range from this position because I should be opening pretty tight. It feels like I can see bet. I do have a gut shot and a backdoor straight draw. So even if I see some action from either of the players has got some outs. When I bet one third, the cutoff folds, but the big blind wants to see a turn and they call. The turn is the seven of spades and again the big blind checks to me. I think I can still scare them off a queen or an eight unless they somehow have got seven eight, so I bet again, this time sizing up to 75%. I really do just want them to fold now, but if they call, I will be screaming for that miracle 10. No need to panic though, they make the fold and they end up winning a small pot that, to be honest, I probably shouldn't have been in in the first place. It's level four now, and again, I'm the one to open the pot. In the low jack again, and I raise with ace three of spades. The small blind wants to build a bigger pot, and he raises to just over eight big blinds. Out of position, I think I'd probably fold this if I was in a sensible mood. But in position, I think I can see a flop as long as I remember to take it easy if it does come ace high. There'll be a good chance I'm out kicked and in a horrible spot. I make the call and the flop is a juicy one. Jack 5-4 with two spades. So I've got an overcard, a straight draw and a flush draw. You can't really ask for any more when you technically haven't hit the flop. The small blind apparently likes the look of this flop too and he carries on by putting in 75% pot. 15 bigs. That's big but my hand has got so much potential. I have a little think and I end up coming to the conclusion that I can raise and try to take control of the pot here because I've just got so many outs. I bump it up to a whopping 40 bigs, leaving me just 40 behind. The small blind likes the situation a little too much for my liking because he snap calls. Now normally I would put someone acting like that quickly on a flush draw, but I block that heavily. So chances are I'm going to need some help. And that is exactly what happens. The turn is the four of spades. I hit my flush. And even though the board's now paired and a little bit more scary, I've got a redraw to a straight flush. The only hand I'm slightly worried about him having is pocket jacks. But I think people often just call the raise preflop with that because it's, it's such a hard hand to play sometimes. So I reckon that I've got to be so far ahead now it's safe to push my remaining chips in when the action's checked to me. Worryingly, the small blind can't get his chips in quick enough. Now I am very concerned about him having those famous jiggities. The cards are flipped and I'm more than a little bit shocked to see Queen Jack off with no spade. 
He does have outs though, and I need to dodge either of the Robbie cards on the river. It's clean, I win a nice big pot. So there's not really a huge amount to talk about in this hand really. It folds to the guy from the last hand and he shoves all in for 10 bigs. Action's on me in the big blind and I've got king nine of hearts. I'm a bit torn here on what to do. My hand isn't great by any stretch of the imagination, but then again, the guy that shoved has shown himself to be pretty wild. Uh, secondly, there's a bounty up for grabs and I am closing the action. So I take a little while to think, but in the end, it's only 10 bigs and I've got, well, loads. Have chips, will play. That's a famous saying in my weekly game, so let's just go for it. The cards are flipped and he shows a much better hand than I thought he might have had. Ace queen off. I am going to need a little bit help here, but the flop is not terrible. It gives me a load more outs when I get the flush draw on jack 6-2. Next out's the five of hearts and he's dead on the turn. Always nice to see. It's a small pot, but it's great to pick up a bounty. Into level five and I open up in middle position with pocket sevens. I get three bet from the button and the action folds back round to me. Now we've both got over 100 bigs at this point and cover everyone else at the table. I don't want to go crazy, but set mining does seem like a good idea. So I make the call and we get the flop. Card in the window is a beautiful seven. I've got a set. That excitement fades a bit though when the other two cards are an eight and a nine. It is rainbow, but it's still pretty scary. Now, I don't think that the hands that beat me are raising too often pre-flop. The potential two pairs aren't three betting, I don't think. Jack 10, five, six, pocket eights or pocket nines aren't either. So even though I think I'm good here, when he does bet a third, I just make the call. I want to take it slowly. The turn is the jack of clubs. Now any 10 makes a straight and there's a flush draw now on the board as well. I check again to the button and he checks behind. That's great news. Now. I think he's got something like ace king and I could be good. Now the river's a brick and I contemplate putting in a value bet, but don't think I'm getting called by much worse with four to the straight out there. So I check to him with the plan to call any sort of reasonable bet that a hand like ace king might bluff with. There's nothing incoming though. He checks behind and he turns over pocket kings. I win. If the board had just been that little bit friendlier, it could have been such a huge pot. So we're still in level five and under the guns limped in. Somehow it folds all the way to the small blind who calls and then the action's on me with ace nine of hearts in the big. Now I've been caught out before with the old limp under the gun and then shove all in with aces when someone raises trick. I just want to see at least three more cards right now, so I check. The flop comes nine five five with two clubs. I know I've hit top pair with top kicker here, but either of the other two players in this hand could have absolutely anything. All our ranges are so wide. So even though part of me wants to bet for protection, I decide to check. The under the gun player puts in a small C bet and the small blind folds. Now, maybe it's a good time now to see how strong he is. I could easily represent a five here from the big blind, so I put in a raise. I three X his bet and he quickly calls. I'm not really sure where this leaves me to be honest, but I'm not loving it. Now the turn is another five. I do have a full house now, but my spidey senses are tingling. Something doesn't feel good here. I check and he doesn't waste much time in betting pot. Hey, 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 what do I do here? I've got a boat, top boat, but I don't like it. It's too much of a hand to fold though. So I do make the call. The river's the four of clubs. Yes, the flush draw gets there, but I doubt he's betting on that with nearly all of the fives out on the board. I check for a third time, really hoping for a check back. Now uh, it's making me sweat a little bit and doesn't make up his mind Im immediately. But in the end, I see what I wanted and he checks behind. The cards are flipped and he turns over King seven off suit. In hindsight, I can't help thinking that I played this hand really weakly, but on the other hand, I can't get over the fact that he played it like he did or he played it at all for that matter. I'm sat here worried about him having aces and he's got king seven off. Level seven now, and I've included this hand because it's something I don't do nearly often enough. Action folds all the way around to the button and he min opens and I'm in the small blind with a seven suited. 
I think these are situations that I miss out on way too often. I would normally call when what I really should do is raise the button. So that's exactly what I do this time. Now, after the fact, I've checked this out and I was right. It is a hand that I can raise with more than half of the time. I've just got to find my balls and pull the trigger more often. Anyway, everyone folds, but I have put it in here because this hand confirms to me that reviewing my hands with GTO Wizard isn't only teaching me things, but it's also confirming some of my thoughts and giving me the confidence to actually follow through on them. In the very next hand, I get another suited eight. This time it's clubs, and this time it comes with an ace. Action folds to me and I open from the button. The big blind calls and we get a flop of king 5-4 with two spades. The big blind checks to me, and in real time I didn't really want to put out a C bet, but I thought I had to represent having the king. I bet half pot, and the big blind 4x's me almost straight away. Next time, I'm going to listen to my gut and just check back. I can't call this this raise, so I fold, let's move on. Now, if you've seen any of my other videos, you might know that Ace Jack is my least favorite hand of all time. I hate it with a passion. And that is the very hand I have now at the end of level eight. Under the guns min raised and the middle positions called. This hand is in my head. So while it's too good to fold, by the way, GTO says I should be folding here every time. I don't want to raise, so I make the call. And this does open myself up to someone squeezing from behind, but it hasn't happened much on this table. So I think I might get to see a flop and a nice flop I do see. It folds all the way around and we see Jack six, four rainbow. Again, I've got top, top and position on the other players in the hand. The original razor C bets in the middle position calls. Now I've got the ace Jack fear in my head. I want to try and win it now and move on. So I put in a raise. In game I go 4x, but against two other players maybe I should have made it a bit bigger, I'm not sure. Anyway, under the gun calls and the middle position folds. The turn's the queen of diamonds. An overcard to my jack isn't what I wanted to see, but with the under the gun player only having a half pot bet behind, and me blocking the flush draws with the ace of diamonds, I just end up wanting to run it and go for his bounty. I put him all in and he's happy to go for it because he makes the call. So much for me blocking his flush draws, he turns over jack 10 of diamonds. A 10 or a diamond on the river could well send me over the edge and I would fear for the safety of my computer monitor. Doesn't happen though, I get my second bounty and maybe more importantly, I finally got rid of the curse of ace jack. Still in level nine, just, and we're playing seven handed. I'm in the low jack and open with ace four of hearts. The hijack calls and so does the small blind. Now, the small blind hasn't been at the table long, but it's been long enough for me to notice that he's, let's say, a little bit wild. So we go three ways to a flop, and what a flop it is, it's all red giving me the nuts. God, I wish this happened more often. Now, the small blind checks to me, and for the second time today, I do something that I don't normally do. In the past, I'd normally check here most of the time because I'd want other people to catch up a little bit so I could try and win more chips. Recently though, I'm trying to change my mindset a bit. There's so many people around that just seem to play crazy that when they've got the nuts, I have to try and build a pot. Hope they've got something and then they'll just donate all their chips to me. So I bet small, but it's still a bet, I put in two big blinds. The hijack calls and then our crazy mate in the small blind puts a big old smile on my face when he snap check raises nearly 5x. So I've got the nuts. Now I'm starting to get a little bit greedy. I take my time, but elect to just call. I'm hoping to induce the hijack into the pot too. Now it's maybe risky, and honestly, it totally contradicts what I just said a minute ago. Anyway, it doesn't matter, the hijack folds, and we go heads up to the turn, which is the three of spades. Small blind's got half a pot size bet behind, and he throws it all in the middle. What a result. Now, yeah, I know it is a little bit of a slow roll from me here, but before I called, I wanted to see his stats and see if he was being just as crazy as I thought he was. Okay, it's a very small sample size, but the stats do back up my conclusion. But not as much as seeing his cards do, though. We're all in, and he turns over 8-2 off for bottom pair. I've got another one drawing dead on the turn and another bounty. 
So it's the same level and we see a limp from the under the gun player. I'm in the cutoff with 8-7 suited and I want to see a flop. I've got a lot of chips so I can afford to splash around a little bit. Now again, I'm not wanting to be burnt by someone slow playing aces under the gun, so I just limped too. Weak, I know, but that's what I did. Now the small blind isn't happy with all this limping and he makes a raise. For some reason though, he goes very small, only makes it three big blinds. So both the under the gun player and myself make the call and we're three ways to the flop. Eight, six, five with two clubs. I've got top pair and a gut shot, so I'm not upset with how this is turning out so far. The small blind C bets for about a third and under the gun quickly calls. Any clubs or over cards will make for a very scary turn, so I just call and wait to see what plays out. Now the turn is the ten of hearts, so I'm downgraded to the second pair, but I've still got my straight draw. This time both players check, which is fine by me. Maybe it will check down the river too and I can win a pot without risking any more chips. The river is the nine of spades, the flush draw misses and I hit my straight. But remember with the 10 out there, it's not the actual nuts. It does check again and now I'm confident no one's got queen jack, I've got to be the winner. I want to bet for value uh, without thinking too much, I bet 75% and that works out to be 16.7 big blinds. Had I looked at the situation a bit more, I would have bet 18.5 to cover the under the gun player just in case by some miracle he calls, and that way I can get his bounty. But I didn't. And what do you know? He calls with jack six off, just fourth pair. Now it was his first hand at the table, and if I had chance to see him play, maybe I would have thought more about getting his bounty. I guess I'll just have to settle for most of his chips instead. So a little while has passed, We're nearly at the end of level 10 now, I open once again from the low jack with ace 10 off. The cutoff calls and our mate in the small blind who has built his stack back up a little bit calls too. And a flop comes ace 8 5 with two spades. Small blind checks and actions on me. Now my kicker isn't great and I've got to be a little concerned about the cutoff behind me so I check and he checks too. Returns to the nine of hearts. Uh, with the lack of action on the previous street, I'm now thinking that my ace is probably good here. It checks to me again, so this time I bet 75% pot. Out of nowhere, the cutoff clicks it back to me for just under 14 bigs. If I call, he's leaving himself with less than half pot behind, and I've got top pair. Now, I'm not putting him on an ace because I think he would have bet the flop, right? Same goes for spade flush draws and any straight draws like 6-7. Maybe he's picked up a heart draw, but I don't think I can fold. I make the call and the river is the six of diamonds. Both flushes miss, but now there's four to the straight on the board. What sevens could he have that have played it like this? Now, I honestly can't think of many that make sense after he checks the flop. So in my head, he's either got a set or absolutely nothing. I check to him to see what he wants to do and he bets one third pot, leaving himself just three bigs behind. Nah, this confuses the hell out of me. Is he leaving some behind so he doesn't bust if I call? Or is he playing me like a fiddle and just wanting to make me think that? So I have a think about it, eventually come to the conclusion that my ace is just too good. But there is no point in me calling his bet when for an extra three I could potentially get his bounty too. So I raise him and my heart sinks when he snap calls. That can't be good. What has he got? He turns over ace jack of spades for flop top pair and the nut flush draw. I can't believe he didn't bet the flop. I never would have put him on that. Now, I'm not sure on a scale of 1 to 10 how badly I played that hand, but I, what I do know is that Barkus made me his bitch and boy does that hurt. Level 12 now and I open in middle position with queen jack suited. Action folds around to the small blind who three bets me, making it nearly nine big blinds. It's back onto me and I do have position and I'm closing the action. So I make the call and I cross my fingers for a decent flop. King 5-4 with two diamonds. Now the king isn't great, but having a flush draw is pretty good. The small blind checks it to me. Uh, more than happy to take a free card here. The turn's another four. Not really a card that hits either of our ranges. He checks again and I think I've got to check behind because I can't reasonably represent anything now after checking back on the flop. The river's the jack of spades, and the small blind checks for a third time. Now, unless he's got ace jack, I'm pretty sure I'm ahead. So I go for value, and I bet just over half pot. When he snap calls, I think I'm about to rake in the 40 big blind pot, until the small blind turns over, 
Pocket Queens. The Poker Gods really screwed me on the river with that one. Thanks for that. So we're still in level 12 and I am tilting a little bit after that last pot. The action's folded round to the button and they've shoved all in for 18 big blinds. The small blind folds and it's on me. Now, I can't justify this at all and I've included it because it highlights what I think is one of my biggest flaws at the poker table and that's not managing my emotions correctly. Whether it's tilt, boredom, frustration or just getting distracted too easily, I really know I need to work on it. Anyway, I make a horrible call with King 2 offsuit. Yep, your eyes and your ears aren't deceiving you. I really did call with King 2 off. The button turns over A6 off and he is ahead. It's looking even better for him when he flops a gut shot to go along with his high card. And the turn is the nightmare card for me. It's a 7 giving him the nuts. The best I can do is hope for a chop. But no, the poker gods want to play another little river joke on me and give me the king when it's too late. What have I done to upset them? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Who am I kidding? I've only got myself to blame for that disaster of a hand. So tilt level 100 now. And the very next hand when the button opens and I look down at an ace in the small blind, I shove all of my 29 big blinds into the middle. The big blind folds and the button doesn't take too long in making the call. I can only assume his decision was influenced heavily by my last hand because he calls me with Jack-10. It's pretty wide in my opinion, but as I've proved, I'm not one to talk. Anyway, we go to the run out and it's pretty good for me. Ace, King, Ace with two hearts. I've got trips, but it does give him a gut shot. Just got to avoid that queen. Turn and river are clean and somehow I'm back in it with more chips than I had before the King-2 shambles. I really do not deserve to be here. I'll take it. So we're level 13 now, and the low jack, who I doubled up with the king two, opens. I'm on the button with pocket jacks, and I three bet to eight bigs. It folds back to the original razor, and he shoves all in for 38 big blinds. Now, it's not really what you want to see when you've got jacks. I take a little time to think about it, and even look at the low jack stats a bit. Now, it does look like he's playing pretty sensibly, so I don't really know what to do. To make a long story short though, I actually end up levelling myself into thinking that the King 2 hand is probably still in his head and he's not giving me credit for actually holding something decent. That combined with the pretty high levels of tilt still in me, even though I have doubled up since then, leads me to make the call. All the chips are in the middle and he turns over Ace Jack, that's so good for me. Now it's time to test whether that Ace Jack curse is well and truly dead and buried. The flop 993 rainbow perfect start he needs one of the three remaining aces that's just three outs 12 percent i am a huge favorite the turn well that doesn't seem reasonable does it right at the end of level 13 and with the blinds about to go up i get dealt pocket fives in middle position only one thing to do here all in let's go Happily, everyone folds and I win a couple of extra chips. Now, the very next hand, I'm in the big blinds and I've got ace 10 off. Action folds to the button who opens to three bigs. The small blind makes the call and I'm left with a decision. Right, the button's range is obviously super wide here, so I could easily be ahead of him. Now, when the small blind just makes the call, that makes me think that he isn't particularly strong either. So even though I haven't got many chips, I think a shove might get through. I go for it and put them all in. The button does fold as predicted, but I didn't take into account that I just can't win against this guy in the small blind. Why wouldn't he call? He chucks them in, and once again I see I'm in great shape. He's got Queen-10 off suit. I've got him dominated. Now the flop is clean. The turn sends shivers down my spine when it gives him an open ender, but the river is a brick, and I finally win a hand against him. This is time to turn this thing around. Well, that's the end of the level and the blinds have gone up. The hijack opens and action's on me in the small blind. I've got ace to a diamond. And based on him being in a slightly earlier position than I'd like, I just make the call. So we go heads up to the flop and it comes ace nine five. Now it's nice to hit that ace, but it's real shame about my kicker. I check to the razor and he bets half pot pretty quickly. I do have a little think about it, but I just can't fold top pair yet. Why call in the first place pre if you're going to fold when you hit an ace? Now turn is the seven of clubs, which I don't think changes that much. 
I check again, and this time the hijack sizes up to 75%. It's basically half my stack. If I make the call here, I think I'm committed to calling the river, so I should probably try and make use of whatever little fold equity I might have and shove. Well, that's not what I do. I call, and the river is not the miracle tour I was hoping for. I check again, and as predicted, the hijack puts me all in. So I go into the tank. I really don't want to make this call. I'm almost 100% sure I'm beaten here. I can't get away from what I was thinking on the turn, though. If I do call there, I pretty much have got to call the river, don't I? Like I said earlier in this video, I really need to listen to my gut more. It was screaming at me to fold and live to fight another day, but I just couldn't do it. I make the call and get shown the bad but pretty obvious news. I'm out.